to 10.38. Malcolm Boyden feeling a bit stressed Monday morning. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'm going to put the kettle on. We'll have a nice cup of sweet tea. <gasps> what? Oh, yes. I forgot about that study they've done in America, haven't I? It seems that sweet tea isn't as good for you stress-wise as you might think. Neil Shah is the founder of the Stressed Management Society. He's the author of 10-Step Stress Solution as well. Let's speak to him about this. He'll know a thing or two. Hello, Neil. Good morning. How are you, Malcolm? Great. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. So I don't necessarily have to turn to the sweet cup of tea if I'm stressed. No, uh, not at all. In fact, that's probably the last thing I would suggest, to be fair. Um, Now, don't get me wrong, there are some uh, significant benefits of drinking tea, and for a lot of people, it's just a time out. I'm having a tea break. Um, And, you know, there are antioxidants and flavonoids in tea, but the the, the sugar, particularly the, you know, what interested me about this particular study is they were suggesting that the sugar and the sweetness of the tea is what brings you benefit. Not actually the case. In fact, it probably had the reverse effect to what you're looking for. Blimey, this is a shock, because sugary tea is long been known as a cure for stress. I'll put the kettle on, we'll have a nice cup of sweet tea. Yeah, now what you've got to bear in mind is when you are stressed, your body has gone into that fight or flight state. You are getting ready to attack or deal with whatever's causing the stress. It's like dealing with a saber-toothed tiger. Perfectly okay if you've got a short-term challenge of stress, but if you've been in that state for extended periods of time, what happens is very quickly you burn off all the energy in your body and you start to feel tired and exhausted, which is when people start craving those pick-me-ups, you know, whether that be a cup of sweet tea, some chocolate, biscuits, I don't know, a glass of wine, whatever it might be. These are all stimulants. The reason you feel better, you've just topped up the tank so you can continue being stressed. Yes. Sugar and stimulants are fuel for stress. They don't take you out from that state. Oh, they're fuel for stress. They feed our stress. Absolutely. You feel better because you've now re-energised yourself so you can continue being stressed for a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly, and that's no good for anybody. Absolutely. What would you suggest I do rather than put the kettle on? Is there anything I can eat that would help my stress or drink? Not alcohol, I wouldn't have thought. Well, well, some of the simplest things actually yield the biggest benefits. So even if that's just stopping um, to, to, to you know, have a piece of fruit, drink some water, staying hydrated is one of the most effective ways of being able to, to kind of, um, you, you know, break that state. Or something as simple as taking a moment away from your desk, move yourself away from whatever's causing the stress, go outside, get some fresh air. More oxygen on board actually will help you to, 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 to break that state. Now, you know, if someone's stressed, panicky, anxious, as much as you, you cited a well-known saying, which is, you know, let's put on a kettle, a kettle and have a, a cup of sweet tea. Another one is, um, you know, if someone's really stressed, calm down, take a deep breath. Yeah. You know, at some level yeah. we all know that to be true because actually getting more oxygen on board is the quickest and easiest way to take yourself out of that stress panicky state. You get more oxygen into your system, more oxygen up to your brain which in turn, again, is going to leave you a little bit more resilient and better equipped to cope with whatever challenges you're facing. I call it the four second rule. Stop, think, breathe deeply and then get on with it again. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love that. In fact, I might use that. No, you can have that one. No, you can have that. <laughs> it's passed down from my Nanny Ada, so it's bound to work. Well, thanks, Nanny Ada. You've, yeah. uh, you've given us some valuable advice this morning. There you go, you see. So forget the kettle. Have a nice drink of water, some fruit, some nuts or seeds. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Anything that your body can quickly turn into energy that will provide it the minerals and vitamins it needs uh, to, to best equip it to cope with whatever challenges it's facing. Often we're getting to ourselves to the fact that we're overwhelmed, that we've got more demand and pressure than we can deal with, and actually we then end up consuming things which are actually increasing the demand that our bodies are under, you know, to process uh, sugar, to process chemicals and process, uh, highly refined foods. Your body has to work very, very hard. You want to basically give, make it as easy for your body to cope with the challenge and pressure it's facing as possible by putting in things that it knows what to do with and to to energy very quickly. Good advice, Neil. Thank you so much indeed for your expertise. You're most welcome. Have yourself a wonderful day. I will. Neil Shah there. Uh, forget the kettle, turn to the water, the seeds, the fruit, the nuts, and... <sighs> Take a deep breath. Take yourself four seconds. And then we'll carry on.